Hey everybody, today we went to the village to spend 24 hours there. We will show you a lot of interesting things, and I think you'll be surprised. First, we go to feed the little ducklings. We feed them with herbs in a mixed feed, and give them water. We also feed the chickens. Take the goat out to pasture so that she can eat fresh grass all day. So that she doesn't run away, we tie her to a column. Using a damp cloth, we wipe down her udder. Now we milk the goat. We got a whole pot of milk. We put a handkerchief on top and filter the milk through it into a jar. Now we have two liters of natural goat's milk. It's time for breakfast. First, we light up an old stove. And we put a kettle with water on to heat up. Pluck mint directly from the bush. And throw it into the kettle. We cover this with the lid and let the water boil. Now we cut a couple of slices of bread. And spread some homemade butter on top. We put sugar into a spoon and sprinkle it on top. And we're left with these sweet sandwiches. Remove the kettle from the stove and fill the cup with mint tea. We have a quick breakfast and gain strength for the whole day. It would seem that everything is so simple. Bread, butter, and sugar. But how delicious is it when the products are all homemade and of the highest quality? Do you know why our grandmothers value bread so much? Everyone knows the saying that bread is the head of everything. Now I will show you what efforts had to be made to get it. Every self-respecting villager plants wheat in their garden. They were waiting for the middle of summer when it would ripen and the stalks would dry out. Then, together with the neighbors, everyone takes sickles in their hands. And they all start plowing the field. The stalks are stacked in heaps. This job is very difficult, especially when you're working in such heat. The field is beveled, and there are a lot of piles with stocks on it. We take two bottles of stocks and twist them together to make kind of a rope. And with its help, we bind a large bunch of wheat. This is called a sheaf. We spread out some kind of tarp, and put the sheaves on it. To thresh grain, you need a special tool, a flail. We don't have one, so let's ask a friend to do it. I think you know him very well. This is Andre. He definitely knows a lot about working with his hands. All right, everyone. So in order to make a flail, the first thing you need to do is thoroughly clean the sticks from the bark. Done. Now, with the help of such a hand drill, we make holes at the end of the sticks. Now we unwind a long piece of rope. We fold it twice and thread it through the hole into the short stick. We slip the rest of the rope into the loop and tighten the knot. For reliability, we wind it around the stick. Then we push the rope into the hole in the long stick. We measure out how long we need the rope and wrap the edge of a long stick in a circle. To securely fix the rope, we hammer a wooden peg into the hole. Cut off the excess, and the chain is completely ready. Andre is a really great addition to our category, Survival in the Village. 
He's a great guy, so be sure to write in the comments how much you liked watching him. Just give him a hello. He'll be flattered for sure. Now, with the help of a flail, you need to thresh the grain. To do this, we hit the stalks well so that the grain flies out of them. Now we remove all the extra straw. We take a bucket, pick up more dirty grain with our hands, and start pouring it from a great high. The grains are heavy and fall straight down, but the wind blows away unnecessary light husks. Thus, we are left with a bucket of grain. Pour that into a bag. We'll drop that off in a cart. Climb on it ourselves. And head off to the windmill. We've arrived. Now we'll go by foot. We go inside and stop right at the entrance. It is necessary to pour the weed into the nearest compartment. After that, on the third floor, we remove the windmill from the brake. The wind begins to gradually unwind it. Giant gears rotate inwards toward the shaft. All the mechanisms of the mill begin to work. On the first floor, we raise the flap. The grain gradually leaves and goes into a special trough. We close everything so that the grain does not fly out. Wheat rises along this track. And we go ourselves up to the second floor. Here it goes into a special sieve that holds up all the stuff we don't need. Only pure grain flies out. We open the flap, and the already sifted grains are poured into the bag. We rise even higher. We pour the wheat into the next compartment. In this thing we have two millstones. Two of these huge flat stones that rotate and crush wheat with their weight, turning it into flour. It seems like at this stage the flour is ready, but not really. It goes to the screw tracks, along which it descends to the first floor, and on the way it's also sifted. In the end, the purest flour goes straight into the bag. That's it, we finally got the flour. Now let's make bread out of it. We break wet yeast with our hands directly into a bowl, Fill with warm water. Add a couple of spoonfuls of flour. And knead. We wait until the yeast starts activating and continue to add flour. A spoonful of homemade butter. We salt this so that the bread has a nice intense taste. Knead it with a spoon until thick and then with your hands. We dust a baking sheet with flour. We form an oval with the dough and put it on a baking sheet. Top with a little flour and cut lengthwise. That's it. We head over to the stove. It's very old. Our great grandmothers used to bake in ones like these. Kindle it. Wait until everything burns down and the stove warms up properly. We push the coals to the sides. And put the dough in to bake. We close the stove so that the heat doesn't get out. After half an hour, we take out the baking tray with a shovel. Just look at what a beautiful loaf of bread turned out. I think now you understand why bread used to be considered the most valuable product on the table. After all these preparations, we dirtied our shirts. Previously, two devices were used to bring clothes back to normal. This is an iron and a washboard. We rub the shirt with laundry soap. Then it's good to rub it on the board. 
We rinse, wring it out, and hang it up to dry. We put an old-fashioned iron on the stove to heat up. We wait until it warms up and iron the shirt. The process is very long. Do you remember the goat's milk we milked this morning? Cream is already gathered on top. We collect it with a spoon and put it in a jar. If you let it settle, it'll become even thicker. And it's very easy to make butter from this. To do this, we use kind of a churn. It consists of a barrel, a lid, and a stick with sort of a wash at the end. Pour half a liter of the warm homemade cream into the barrel. We return the stick, close the lid, and start churning. After half an hour, the butter is ready. Now you need to pour in cold water. Then it'll rise. We wash it with one hand. Cover a small bowl with gauze. Shift the butter into it. We fold over the gauze. It used to be that such products were stored in the cellar because there were no refrigerators back then. Now we'll make some goat cheese. Pour two liters of milk into a bowl. And the hens here laid eggs. So we take six of those and break them into a bowl. Pour half a liter of homemade sour cream on top. Salt. Mix it up. Pour all that liquid into a jug. When the milk boils, pour in a thin stream. At the same time, we constantly mix. Without stopping stirring, cook for 10 minutes. Put a colander in a bowl, gauze on top, and pour out the entire contents of the pan. Fold up the gauze, and drain the mixture. We put our future cheese back in and under a press. We take the basket ourselves and walk through the whole village to the forest for mushrooms. There has been rain recently and we immediately find a buttermilk mushroom. We cut it off. Not far from it, we find another one. And put it in the basket. Several more times we found one mushroom each. Then we came across a whole clearing of them. So in half an hour, we found about half a dozen buttermilk mushrooms. That's enough for us. We decided to cook mushroom soup. We put a cauldron of water on the fire, clean all the mushrooms, cut them into small pieces. Now let's throw them on to cook. Let's go to the garden for the rest of the vegetables. First, you need potatoes. To dig them out, we use real horsepower. We tie the plow to it with chains. Now one person leads the horse, and the second one directs the plow. A row of potatoes is dug out in 15 seconds. We collect it in a bucket. And pick an onion. And send that into the bucket as well. We dig out a carrot. and a couple of heads of garlic. We also decided to pick some dill. Now we go to the well. We dump the bucket in. And raise it out with water. We trim our vegetables and clean them. We transfer all this to a huge colander and fill with water. Let's thoroughly scrub the vegetables. And rinse again. Now they're clean. First we take the potatoes. 
cut them into small pieces. Next, you need onions. Finally dice them. Drop all that in too. Now you just have to cut the carrot. And sit it into the soup. Salt it. And mix it up. That's it, the soup's ready. Let it cool down gradually right on the stove. Now let's prepare the last dish for lunch. Cut the pork first into slices. Then crosswise. We take three potatoes, cut them into the same pieces. Crush a clove of garlic with a knife, and finally dice it. We'll salt it all, pepper, and mix with our hands. We transfer this to a clay pot and put it in the oven. Just for a half an hour and the pork and potatoes are ready. We release the cheese from under the press. We take it out of the gauze. and cut it into slices. The butter is already set, so we take it out. We put the soup on the table, fill a deep bowl with it, And we'll wash this down with Grandma's homemade juice. Now we just need to put a spoonful of homemade sour cream in the soup. Sprinkle with dill. And after such hard work, we finally have a good lunch. Everything is homemade and very tasty. I think those who spent their summers at Grandma's will understand me. While it's still light outside, we tie a can to ourselves with a handkerchief and go pick berries in the garden. First, we picked ripe red raspberries. Pour half a cup into a bowl and pick off some mulberry. My grandmother has a very large grove. If you gorged on mulberries as a kid and then walked around with purple hands all day, like this video. Pull the mulberry into another bowl, cover the berries with sugar, and put this on the stove. Crush the berries with a spatula. Now cook this jam over the low heat, gradually evaporating it. When it's ready, we move it from the stove and pour it into bowls. See, this didn't seem enough to us. So we went to a neighbor who has his own aviary, and he sold us a jar of honey. Now pour that into a bowl, and add a special wooden spoon. Now what we need to do is make Russian pancakes. We break three eggs into a bowl, add sugar, milk, oil, and mix it all up. Pour in the flour, and mix with a fork until all the lumps disappear. You should get this kind of liquid dough. Heat the frying pan well, pour half a ladle of dough onto it, and distribute it. After a minute, we turn it over, and after 30 seconds, the pancake is ready. We made a whole pile of pancakes. Now it's time to set the table. We fill a glass with milk and have dinner. Wrap that honey on a spoon and pour it over the pancake. Fold it over 
and try it. Mmm, these three things, pancakes, honey, and milk, just brings me back to my childhood. It's better than any restaurant food. Now let's try some raspberry jam on the pancake. It's also unrealistically delicious. How about the mulberry jam? The taste isn't inferior to raspberry at all. I hope you learned a lot of interesting things while watching this video. Write to us in the comments. Do you want me to do a third one of these? If there are a lot of likes and comments, I'll get the hint that you're interested in this, and I'll come up with another episode of 24 Hours in the Village. Be sure to send this video to your friends. After all, a lot of effort has been invested in this video. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you, everybody.